Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I want to kind of talk about suicide again. Yesterday, I recorded again about a gentleman who had been praying for God to prove to him that he heard his prayers and his cries of suicide. He was so downcast that he wanted to kill himself. And he says, if you hear me and you're really there, somebody will offer me a ride. And lo and behold, Holy Spirit tells me to pull over and offer this man a ride. And I had never done that before. I don't offer men, when I'm in the car by myself, male strangers a ride. Because it's dangerous, guys, okay? It can be. But Holy Spirit told me to offer the man a ride. So here's the beautiful part about that miracle. God heard the man. He knew how much pain he was in. And he blessed me by telling me, to be the answer to the man's prayer that God was sending to him. And I not only gave him a ride, okay, I was a Bible teacher and was able to minister to him that he could, that God loved him. And he went back to church, got back involved with some men that really loved him, and his life turned around. So uh, during these teachings of unforgivable uh, sin, unfortunately, I have had to correct that the unpardonable sin is not suicide. So we've been talking about suicide. And the question always is, is if a person commits suicide, do they go to hell? So I wanted to teach that the uh, unpardonable sin that Jesus was talking about in that verse had nothing to do with suicide, okay? So I don't know why the church teaches that the unforgivable or unpardonable sin is suicide and it's off to hell, okay? because the Bible doesn't teach that. Here's another thing I said in a teaching is that number one or number two, the second thing in that question, number one, suicide's not the unforgivable sin. Number two, you're going to have to prove to me that God sends people to a place called hell so he can torment them forever and ever and ever and never have any mercy on them because uh, original scriptures and manuscripts and the church fathers never taught that, okay? That is a doctrine that was put into the body of Christ, suicide as well as hell, by Roman Catholicism in the 400 AD time period, okay? And we've just got it in our churches. There is nothing in our Bibles that say that when someone dies and leaves their body that God never communicates with them again. That's not in your Bible. And today I'm going to read a little more about that. I want to just read a few more scriptures and talk about this. The first thing I want to do is read a quote from a man that I was listening to on a teaching. And he says this. He says, if God is forced to punish people forever in hell or annihilate most of mankind, then his salvation plan to save all mankind failed. Satan becomes the great victor, and God gets the consol consolation prize by saving a remnant of mankind from hell. We need to think about that. If the majority of people that have ever lived from Genesis chapter 1 all the way to the end of time, if the majority of people are going to either go to hell to be tormented forever or even to be annihilated, to be burning in hell for a little while, but at some point God does have a little pity on them and he'll go ahead and let them cease to exist, then Jesus is not the victor. Satan is the victor and Jesus gets second place award, right? Now that sounds harsh, but that's what we're telling people. If you don't accept Jesus or say a sinner's prayer before you got die, the devil wins and you go to hell and you're going to lay in that place of fire forever and ever and ever. Now, I am going to do a teaching on hell and pull that apart because we, we have absolutely been lied to through our King James Bible translations by the translators. I don't know that they did it on purpose. I'm not saying they did. But we have believed a lie that was put in the Catholic Church in 400 A.D., so let me go to Scripture and read some things to you. I'm going to start right at the beginning of the Bible. I'm going to go over to Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And this is what the Bible says. And the Lord God 
told man and laid a charge or a warning. It says in some scriptures, and God warned the man. You may eat from any tree in all of the garden, but you must not eat from the fruit of the tree which gives the knowledge of good and the knowledge of what is not good, evil. If you eat from the fruit of that tree, you most certainly will die. Did you know that nowhere, I should say anywhere, in the Old Testament, not before the fall of Adam, at the fall of Adam, or right after Adam disagreed, uh, uh, dis disagreed with God's good word, but disobeyed God, does God say, for this, you're going to go to hell. The Bible is clear, guys. It says that you will die. And Adam did die. Okay? So we need to be sure of what we're believing. God said that we would die. Okay? Here's a scripture. Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Therefore, as sin came into the world through one man, Adam, and death, it doesn't say hell, and death as the result of sin. So death, death spread to all men, no one being able to stop it or escape its power because all men have sinned. Okay. No one being able to escape or stop the power of death. Not the power of Satan of putting us in hell or God putting us in hell. It says escape the power of death. Okay, let me see if I can find one of my other scriptures. Here we go. This is Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. I've already read it. I'm reading it again. Since therefore children share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings, Jesus himself in a similar manner partake of the same nature, becoming a man, uh, that he would through by going through death, that he might bring to naught, no effect of him who had the power of death. He took the power of death from the devil. Okay, so the scripture I just read to you said that man could not escape the power of death that Satan had over them because of sin. And then Jesus comes to take the power of death from the devil. I hope you're tracking with me because we in the church equate sin with hell and that place of forever and ever torment that we can never be set free of or be reconciled to God, right? But what the Bible actually teaches, and I pray that you're getting this Holy Spirit, I pray that you will help them see clearly on what I'm teaching today. Jesus set us free from the power of death because he took the power of death from the devil. Sin causes death, and Jesus came to save us from death. Let me keep going here. I want to read you another scripture, Romans 14, 19. The reason Christ died and rose from the dead to live again is so that he would be Lord over both the dead and the living. Jesus conquered death because it had a hold over mankind. And Jesus broke that hold so that we could be set free from that. I'm going to give you another scripture. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 21 through 25. And here we go. For since death had came through a man, Adam, the resurrection of dead ones also came through a man, Jesus Christ, Jesus for just as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be given life. I'm going to stop right here and say this to you because I know somebody's thinking this. Yeah, but I have to say a sinner's prayer or I have to accept Jesus. Well, you didn't declare an alliance to Adam. You have never said, Adam, I believe in you and therefore I'm going to die like you. So we teach people that they have to believe in Jesus and say a sinner's prayer or, or they're still gone, they're not in Christ. This scripture in the Greek is so crystal. You cannot get more clear. This is crystal clear in the Greek. 
that because of what Adam did, all of us got trapped into death. And what Jesus did, all mankind was released from the power of death. Let me keep reading, though. But each in his own order. Now, this is the part I want to bring out. Did you know each in his own order? Did you know you can get set free from the power of death and uh, from, the, from sin and uh, the effects of sin right here, right now in this lifetime by following Jesus and living the way that he taught us to live, okay, to go toward good and stay away from evil, going back to Genesis chapter 2, right? So we can become like Christ right here in this lifetime. But did you know the Bible talks about that people will uh, see Christ again in the afterlife, in the second resurrection. All of the dead will be raised to life. Jesus will raise every person that has ever lived back to life because he is the Lord over death and the living over the ones who are dead and the ones who are living. I know we're not taught this very well, and I'm sorry that we've been confused about the difference in death and hell and eternal punishment and all. And I'll keep teaching on this, guys, but let me go ahead and finish reading this scripture. It says, Jesus Christ, the first fruit after that, the ones of Christ at his coming, and then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to his God and his Father, and he has abolished all rule and all authority and all power, for he must reign until the time he has put all of his enemies at his feet. Jesus is Lord over everything in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. He is Lord over death. Now, here's another one I read the other day, and here's a, well, I'll read this one. This is 1 Corinthians 1555, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? And did you know the King James uh, even did, they didn't even use their Greek word for hell here because it wouldn't make sense or it would give Jesus victory over hell. Watch this. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, death, where is thy victory? Now, what if we put hell in there and read it? Because that's the same word they translated as hell. Let's say it like this. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? Well, I can tell you, hell don't have any victory. Hell don't have any victory. Jesus says in uh, Roman, I'm sorry, Revelations chapter 1, verse 18, it says, Jesus is talking. I love this. I am the one who lives. I was dead, but look, behold, I am alive forever and ever, and I hold the keys to death and the place of the dead, Hades. And your King James Bible says, I hold the keys to hell. I can tell you where, oh, death, where his sting went. It went right in to the hands of Jesus, and Jesus is the one who has the victory. Satan does not have victory over me. Death does not have victory over me. And hell does not have victory over me or any other person who has ever lived. Jesus has the victory. And at some time in the future, and one day to the Lord is like a thousand to us, he's got plenty of time to see that all things are reconciled unto himself. That's what he sent Jesus to do. He reconciled the entire world to himself. Jesus on the cross, the Father was with him, reconciling the world back to himself. Our Father and Jesus has an unfailing plan. Now, will there be a time of anguish and correction for some people? They're experiencing that right now today in this life, in the physical flesh. There are people in torment, mental anguish, because they're not receiving the truth and correcting their ways of error. That will happen to some folks once they step out of this life into the spirit realm. That's all I'm going to teach today. I love you and listen to this again. And again, and let Holy Spirit get it in your heart. I love you, and I'll see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.